Why did DJ risk everything to go to live? It's not the money. It's not the money. Why did DJ risk everything to go to live? There are lots of reasons people go or don't go. It's more going to be about fear and greed. And greed is not necessarily about money. Uh, it's never about money. It's never about money. Not at the top. There's three reasons usually before money. But let's look at what Liv is looking for. Let's start by explaining what's Liv looking for and what's DJ looking for and where they met, where that negotiation reached success in early May, presumably, because he announced uh, at the end of May that he was going. So first thing I'm going to do, Darkstar, and I want, I want you to chime in here, is talk about, I'm looking over here at my notes, I'm going to talk about the top recruits that Liv's business plan says we want. So let's, let's go back to January of 2022, before any of this really came out in the public in a big way, right? February, we have Rory talking at Riviera, and it's kind of getting traction as far as lives no good, nobody's going to go there, all that stuff. So January, right. I'm going to dial back to where it's quiet. January, over at Live headquarters, those guys have their list. These are the guys we want. These are the guys we're going to yeah. throw money at, and all the other things that come with live actually it's not in that order to be honest i say live says here's why you should come play here one two and the money third one and two different for every player three money a lot of money because it's risky to go over there but one and two here's the reasons okay so their top recruits would be now you you push back here dark star tiger number one true um go ahead give true? me number two true true true, true. tiger right, number I'm one go. that's the guy we you, most i'll give want. you tiger True. Okay, Tiger. Uh, Num all right. What? What were you gonna say? Well, I'll give you Tiger, but I, 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 with his injuries, I think he'd be more of a figurehead, and they already have Phil as a figurehead. That's, so we'll, we'll agree to disagree. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's a nuanced point, <laughs> but yeah. they threw the most money at Tiger. So I'm gonna, but I think it's Tiger. Fine, we can disagree on that. Maybe he's number two. Phil yeah. was number one. I don't think so. But let's just no. stick with. We already know we're spotting Phil, and this is not the Phil episode. Although we're going to do that on yeah. why Phil went to live. But Tiger's number one. This is the live list in January of 2022, according to us. Okay, according to okay. logic. Let me say it that way. Spieth number two, and we can yeah, talk about absolutely. why that is, but not today. We don't have time. But Spieth number two, true or false? True, absolutely. True. Spieth All right, I got in my Dark Star on my, number two. on my side. Rory number three. Correct. True. Absolutely. Okay. We're, we're for, now the top three, Tiger, Spieth, Rory. We're not to DJ yet. So, And no. you can think, audience, in terms of money, okay? It's getting lower. The money comes down the more far, farther down the list we go. Number four, Bryson DeChambeau. Yeah. True or false? Uh, I, I would put... I, I would put... I'd put either DJ, Rom, Thomas. I, I, I don't know. I, I'm not. I, I'm not going to put him up that high. But but he's certainly in that realm. He's. I think the first three are in a different level. Phil's already part of the program. The first three are in one level, and now the other four or five guys are interchangeable. I know you're a little bit more specific. I, so I, go ahead. I, I blow my nose at you. Silly person! I blow my nose at you, so-called Arthur King. <laughs> <laughs> I do okay. not agree with that at all. I okay. do not. I do not. Um, I think Bryson is by far and away a bigger news media story in the last 12 months than is any of those guys you just mentioned. Uh, okay. So I put Bryson at four. Comment. Please comment away, uh, audience. I'd love to hear that. Dark Star and I can certainly have a cheeseburger wager on that. Um, so... Bryson four, okay, that's where I'm at at least. DJ five, can we agree that DJ's fifth? If we have to pick a spot in your DJ's, interchangeable yeah, lineup, he, right? Interchangeable lineup. He's after those first few guys. I could put him at fifth. Yeah. Okay, fifth is DJ. Then, okay, now I think we more agree. Let's just roll through this really quick. At least get to the top twelve is what I have here. DJ's yeah. fifth. Rom sixth. Justin Thomas seven. Brooks Kepka eight. 
Cam Smith 9, and that's a really interesting one. Unfortunately, this is not the Cam Smith Why He Went show, but we're going to do that. Um, Patrick Cantlay 10. Colin, you know what? Well, Colin Morikawa maybe before that. Colin Morikawa yeah. 10, Cantlay 11. Remember, this is January 22. This is the live right. list. And yeah, 12, this Scotty is, Scheffler. Yeah. Scotty well, Scheffler. if this is January, Scheffler's not even there. Not even the top 12. To That's be, possible. And, and Morikawa is probably higher. Yeah, right. Morikawa, yeah. Two, cha- two majors by then, obviously. Yeah, right. Cantlay had just won the... The, the big tournament that whatever he that started. stupid thing is at the end of the year yeah that was that was the bmw i think that was in uh baltimore uh caves valley and they moved it this year to delaware that was the bmw right and he right. had a phenomenal performance down the against whoever that was Th- thomas well that was true that was against dechambeau so that probably oh, puts yeah. dechambeau yeah, up right. there that's that's yeah, what put Cantley point. on the map that's and he's a nice a guy. He's a whole, you know, all American guy. That that's the kind of boy that fits into this episode well, beautifully. That fits into the episode. What that's exactly right. That is. We'll yeah. get to that well, audience. The, well, what are they talking about? These guys talking about? Because DJ, he's the button down PGA guy. Yeah. Well, he's a button down. He he he's the next Davis Love. He's a button down guy. He's reserved. He's quiet. Versus DeChambeau. I mean, they had to love the fact that he beat DeChambeau. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was good for the tour. It was good for everybody. Um, yeah. And good for ratings, all that good stuff. Okay, so that's our list. So, DJ's fifth. So, the money is a quiz. So, how much money do we need to throw at DJ? Now, the calculation comes in on Liv's part. Now, this is all about why DJ risked everything to go there. What do we mean, risked yeah. everything? Let's, let's pivot back to DJ's point of view. So, we know where he is in the pecking order. We know what kind of that money looks like because we know he went for 125 million. That's a lot of money, but it's not 200. It's not 500. It's not 750, which is the Tiger number rumored, or the Jack Nicholas number. We didn't put Jack on this list, but he was on the list. We should have. Um, yeah. You know, Jack's number was massive, uh, and he didn't go. So, th- did we make that point? It's not about money. Let's make that point again. If it were about money, these guys would have all gone. Now sure. I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking, which is, well, it wasn't enough money. No, it's just not money. They they already have a lot of money, and this wasn't enough more money, so money's not it. And the point is, if money were it, then and they were greedy, which sort of is the the corollary to money's it's all about money, then the 500 million Rory would go because he's greedy. You know, I'm going to go 500 million. Of course, it's all about money. It's not. It's not about money. He doesn't have 500 million, Rory. He has a hundred million, maybe one hundred fifty. They, I'm sure they would have thrown, not one hundred twenty-five, because he's third on the list. It would have been more like two fifty. Yeah, and and you're not going to change their lifestyle. They, there was never going to be enough money to really you, change their lifestyle. I'll take a shot at this. We're going to get into this deeper in the episode, so I'll, I want to get back to why DJ risked everything to go to live. I want to get to that, but deeper into this episode. So stay tuned. I'll I'll talk a lot about. Why money is third or third, usually fourth sometimes, on the people's lists of motivating factors. Okay. And I'll take a stab at a soundbite right now, which is you, it, you can't buy someone's desire. You, you, it's not for sale. Back to live. And we'll get back to that in more detail later on in the episode. Um, DJ, why did he risk everything? And why did, you know, why did he fit in where he fit in? Okay. So... To, to risk everything, what is everything? Every, your career, at least in a career sense, everything. He's already won two majors. He's already made a lot of money. He's already in the top five because we just put him fifth on the list of lives. So that explains where he is in the pecking order in the PGA Tour, on the PGA Tour. Why risk any of that? He's going to make 10, and we're debating this, Dark Star, I know. DJ is going to make 10, 15 million a year, all in, business ventures, cashing in on his celebrity status as an athlete, the tour tournament winnings, sponsorship, all of it. All of that rolls into 10, 15 million a year if nothing changes, if Liv doesn't exist or he doesn't go. So 70, 80, 90 million. Okay, 125 is not that far north of that. And yeah, that may but, be all right. he ever makes at Liv. Liv could fall apart. You know, uh, the, the 125, but, uh, presumably up front, most. What was it that made him risk everything that he'd built to go to some startup 
because I'm going to throw in the other emotion. It's the fear that he does get injured. The $125 million up front is a little bit nice as a security blanket, okay? Because there's always that fear, and in DJ's case, fear and hatred of the PGA Tour are, are, are going to be my main points, okay? Uh, fear? Um, I don't know about fear. Uh, well, it's fear, uh, you know, uh, fear of sus- being suspended maybe permanently because... He's been made the whip, whipping boy of the PGA Tour. It's the, it's the hatred of the PGA Tour and what they've done to him. They've made him, and, and we'll go through the suspensions and the comparisons here. You know, he, all of the PGA Tour, first of all, you're not supposed to, they are not required to announce recreational drug suspensions. But somehow everybody knows he was suspended in 9, 12, and 14 for recreational drug use. One marijuana, two, co- two cocaine. 2012, 2014. Yeah. And it's, it's everywhere. And they're, the fact that a few times they had a chance to deny those rumors and they didn't comment. They quote unquote didn't comment. You know, what did we say here? He's leaving for, DJ said, I'm leaving for personal challenges. And the PGA Tour said, yeah, he's leaving for personal challenges. Was it cocaine? Well, we're not going to comment. Really? So the, the lack of comment was the affirmation of the uh, drug abuse. I, so I agree. There, there's, that's my first point, is it's the hatred of the PGA Tour for what they've done to him relative to especially other players they lumped him in with john daly they made him into a john daly type character of his generation so he's the the whipping boy for his particular generation uh yeah and you know uh john daly is an interesting study that's a different show but uh let me add because you made me think of it that he was at the same time a major draw huge draw for the pga tour so he's a ratings enhancer big time right You'd love to have right. a bunch of John Daly's because he's a ratings enhancer, whereas most sure. of the players are totally vanilla, right? Patrick Cantlay, yeah. totally vanilla. Yeah. But Daly really moves the needle. He hit it forever. He was colorful. He was funny. He was tragic. He did I had and all he brings the an al- and, and he brings an alternative fan. Oh, absolutely. He was a game. Shakespearean yeah. play on display, right? But yeah, they, exactly. they, they distanced him anyway. They shuffled him off anyway. And they, is, that is really interesting. So certain things to the, I'm going to say right. the golf aristocracy because I've sort of been throwing that term around. Certain things to the golf aristocracy are more important than money, really, the yeah. success of the tour. And, uh, yeah, you know, they don't want that guy in the grill room. That's the nice way I'm using to say what I'm saying, which yeah. is, you know, we don't really need John Daly in the grill room where we're having lunch. Right. You know. Both DJ and Daly probably had a checkered past growing up, and they inserted them where and when it benefited the PGA Tour. Correct. And, and, you know, they, they knew that. They know that. They knew it. They would, they would rather have Justin Thomas than <laughs> DJ. Sure. Justin Thomas. But Just, they can't control du- it that well. Yeah. So JT yeah. is the Davis love of his era. Of his generation. As opposed to well, the John Daly DJ... Now you have the Davis Love and JT. That that's the, you know, those I, are the that's, two guys. That's an that, excellent point, and I'm going to use your point to stand on top of your shoulders and and say that JT is that yes, but he's a a distant junior version of that compared to Jordan Spieth. Jordan Spieth well, encompasses all of those things for the PGA Tour. They don't even need to like Jordan personally, and I think they do probably like him because he's a likable guy, and I think Jordan's smart about being likable. But even if they didn't, he checks every box on the golf aristocracy's list of who to hold up. Now, Rory even checks more boxes than does Jordan, and I'm going to sneak this in right here because I just thought of it. Why would Rory check more of those golf aristocracy boxes than Jordan Spieth? Therefore, Rory's going to get a better shake from the establishment than would Jordan Spieth. And it ties into why Jordan's a little more vulnerable, which ties into another point we'll make in the show, which is fascinating. Rory is not nearly as gifted intellectually as Jordan. So <laughs> if you, what do you really want if you're the aristocracy? Well, you like players who fit all the boxes but aren't so smart as to cause trouble. You don't want to yeah. make waves like Phil Mickelson 
keeps making waves because he's smart and he keeps saying he's figured out that we're hiding money and he's willing yeah. to go to bat about that you think rory mcelroy would a ever figure that out no he's not curious could he figure it out if you laid it in front of him right. sure he's not stupid but he's not curious phil mickelson was more than curious and more than able to figure it out and and well, speed has that same element to him more than does rory so rory's going to be higher up the pecking order at the grill room than is speed yeah well, and also, yeah, and he is, and that's certainly evident with him and Tiger putting together the tomorrow golf. They didn't put that together last week. That's been in the works for a while. Well, and they didn't so, put it to another excellent point, Dark Star. Tiger, it's Tiger's gig, right? So yeah. Mike McClarty and uh, Dick Ebersaw and the gang, who are, and whoever else is into that, the backing, you know, the idea. It wasn't those two guys particularly. Um, so there's other investors that are behind it. Yeah. Who knows? And, and Jordan's not going to follow. Jordan's smart enough not to That's follow it. along yeah, with hit Tiger. The on the head. Tiger's and number one. Our pecking order at Live says so much about so many different things. So Tiger's it's Tiger's gig. Can't do it without Tiger. And who does Tiger want as a wingman? Yeah, Rory. Rory, because he's controllable. Cause Rory's, yeah. He's he's malleable. He'll do what we tell him to do, which is what you want in a vice president. Um, and Jordan is going to have his own ideas. He might make waves. Uh, maybe, maybe, you know, this is how business deals get done, right? Who do you want there? Yeah. I want a guy that I can control who's easy and famous and I'll have checks all the other boxes. Rory's perfect. Right. And, it, yeah, and yeah. we're going to shower him with money and he'll be great. Okay. That's Spieth and Tomorrow Sports. I want to get right back on these suspensions because that's where this gets really interesting. Dark Star. I know you're all over this. Tell us more about these suspensions of DJ. Yeah, so we got three. We got the 2009, 2012, 2014. 2012, he's got to make this ridiculous excuse up. I'm lifting a jet ski. I hurt my back. So the cat's out of the bag. The PGA is not supporting him. But 14 is where it gets to the point of he's going to be done with the PGA Tour if he's got anywhere else to go. But he's a pro golfer. He's only got one place to play. That's the PGA Tour. So let's look at what happens in 14. They suspend him in the beginning of August. So he hasn't won a major yet. They suspend him for the PGA Tournament. He's playing the best golf of his life. PGA he hasn't won a major yet. PGA Championship. They, he also misses out on the FedEx Cup, probably a few million dollars, potentially a lot of money, and the Ryder Cup, which is basically all about my sponsors. My sponsors love me in the Ryder Cup. I've been a Ryder Cup stalwart. You even fast forward to that. It's a six-month suspension, so he misses the guaranteed payday at the Tournament of Champions in January. In Hawaii. So I, nice in Hawaii, which is nice. I'm sure Paula would have liked to have gone to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. That's a quick aside. But the point is, this last, you know, the, the timing of it, the money it probably cost him. Yes, if he's got any alternative, he's gone. It makes a great so. point, doesn't it? A side point to this whole thing. So let me put it in business terms at least. Your employer has demonstrated that they don't like you at all. Now, maybe that's legitimate. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's somewhere between those two things. But if the employer loves you and you fail one of their mandatory tests, they find a way to make that go away or be a minimal problem. Here, as Dark Star just says, you're out of the PGA Championship. You're out of the Ryder Cup. Ryder Cup, it's a pathway to the Hall of Fame. That's and DJ had not won a major at this point. So now you're thinking, you know what? I need to go work somewhere else. My employer is a pain, yeah. at, to, say, to say it nicely. Uh yeah, you can't go anywhere else. But there is you know, nowhere else to but work. The great, the great thing about DJ here is he comes back strong. I mean, what a player! He comes back, and the 15 U.S. Open June. So he's only been playing competitive golf now for what three, uh, four months, five months, give or take, and he comes back, and and talk about the PGA being lucky. You know, the three putt. On the 18th for the, the, the 2015 U.S. Open, where Louis Oosthuizen described it as putting on broccoli. Oh, <laughs> but the point was, they Make sure you flag down the cart know. girl for another beer when she comes right. by. Oh, it's the U.S. And, Open. Oh, that's right. 
Westwood was in the the group with him. He was in, I believe, the second to last group. Westwood's in the group. And you look at the Twitter feed where guys like Spieth and Roy were like, I wouldn't have hit another shot. Spieth, I remember his tweet was something along the lines of, I would have thrown a tantrum and not hit another shot. <laughs> and DJ yeah. just went on. And by the way, to quickly summarize this, because it, it, it's it's amazing. You know, he was coming off, I believe he was, how many shots back from Lowry to start the day? Four or Four. five? Four. 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 And lo and behold, Lowry's three over on the front, and DJ, I think, was one under. And lo and behold, it tightens up the tournament on the 12th tee, oh giving God. him a penalty shot. How many players on the PGA Tour would have been able to pull off what DJ pulled off after the 12th hole a tiger yeah. definitely he's got that ability for sure yeah to focus on what he needs to do for him uh maybe spieth i you know the the uh the open championship that he won after being almost out of bounds and all that was pretty spectacular focus um get the most out of what you can do dj and that's about it yeah i, I don't see anybody else with that kind of mental toughness no um i Nothing. Com- I mean, there probably is somebody we we had unlimited time to think about it, but it'd yeah. be interesting to get that list together. But it's a short, short list, very but, short. So yeah, the the, uh, the ruling was it was horrendous. How, how do you have a person horrendous. play oh, 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 six can I throw holes in for the audience? Can oh I please, yeah. Um, so on the fifth green, I didn't know this. So then, presumably, it's reasonable to conclude that because he made those practice strokes, that he alone most reasonably could have caused that ball to move. Okay, you could say that, but if it were anybody else besides DJ, and and here's the little factoid that I love to find and throw into things. If you look at the aerial of that green, the fifth green at Oakmont, there are five bunkers. The, The whole green is surrounded by beach, by beach. Very difficult pin. In fact, the the young kid who fell apart the last round, what's his name? Andrew something or other. He yeah. says later on after the tournament, the pin on the fifth green was ridiculously placed. So guys were in the bunkers all day long. Well, what happens when you kick your ball up on the green from the bunker? Sand. There's sand all over the bunker, all over the green surface where the pin is. Little grains of sand. Now, is it reasonable to say the DJ's ball was sitting on a grain of sand or two or three? And it oscillated off one of those grains. Of course, it's reasonable. It's it's probable. That's probably what happened. But that's not the ruling he got. There's bunkers all over this green, all over, right well, near the pin placement. The first thing that I thought of was the fact that if it was not DJ, if it were oh, yeah. Tiger, for there's example, no question. No yeah. You think Tiger gets a? You think Tiger has a little guy walk up to him on the twelfth green? Oh, Mr. Woods, I'm sorry to bother you. Um, You might get a penalty. That's the real cream, the real frosting on the cake here. I mean, it's worse than giving you the penalty. They're telling you, you could play any which way you want, and you still might lose. I think, yeah, he only won by three. I just just looked. He only won by three over Larry. Remember, he birdied the 18th. What really makes that shot so great in the, uh, when you look at the circumstance of the tournament, Larry's behind him with holes to play and possibly birdies to make. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the final and the final totals don't reflect how well he played on the back nine under all the duress of not knowing what was going to happen. That, that That's incredible. It's, but this is where is. when and when you look at it, the retroscope, obviously, I if I can get another employer, I'm getting another employer. And um, damn straight. Yeah, damn, damn straight. straight. Damn straight. And anybody uh, in the uh, world uh, thinking their bo- their employer treats them like that. And we're, we're lumping the PGA Tour. Let's make a thinking man point here. Yes, we know that the USGA runs the US Open and the PGA Tour does not. However, when, when we like to use the term, at least I do, golf aristocracy, who runs the OWGR, right. for example? PGA yeah. Tour, USGA, RNA. So the golf aristocracy, is, yes. They're, yeah. they're, we fi- think that, you know, there's the, probably DJ is thinking it's one and the same, more right. or less. And by the way, in a five-hour U.S. Open round, going from the fifth green to the 12th tee is probably an hour and a half. 
Yes, and they they couldn't the get they couldn't get a few guys in the truck to make a ruling sooner. I would have expected 45 minutes just from a logistics point of view. Get the guys together, get the tape queued up, watch it a few times, talk about it. 45 minutes seems like the right amount of hustle. If I had been the tournament director, I'm like, look, the ship has sailed, boys. You got to make the ruling yeah. on the whole. It's unfair to Mr. Johnson. It's unfair it's un to everybody to go out later to and try to do something. Yeah, It's not golf. That's not how golf works. You make a ruling and you move along. Right. You do your best. It's not perfect. It's not a game of perfect. You make a reasonable call. There was a rules official there. Was it reasonable it went in the water? Did it go out of bounds? What was reasonable? Make the call. He had a playing companion. Ah, uh, Lee Westwood was there, and Lee could have said, I, I didn't see him cause it to move. That's your first stop is Lee Westwood. Then you call on the rules official who didn't see anything. You don't go to instant replay. There is no instant replay in golf. It doesn't exist. That's true. It didn't at that time for sure. But that still doesn't. It's absurd. Yeah. It's a, if it had been Tiger, it wouldn't have happened. If it had been Spieth, it wouldn't have happened. If it had been Rory, it would not have happened. No. We're painting a pretty good picture here, I think. All right, and we're not even, I don't think we're even done yet, right? We're, now yeah. we've moved no. on to rules. So, well, let's, so let's, by 2016, and DJ pulls off a miracle, so much credit to him, so much credit to him, like him, don't like him, whatever, to hit the drive and the six iron that he smoked into 18. On, at Oakmont, with that cloud hanging over him, to do that is amazing accomplishment yeah. in sport. That's nothing short of, you know, a two-out home run to win the game in the World Series. Uh, so let's pivot well, to the other rulings, Dark Star. Where do well, you want to yeah, next? Well, yeah, I rulings? was just going to say here. I got a quote for you. Lay it on me. All right. Under the circumstances, the whole commotion of that, any of us could have made that mistake. I'm just going to tell you, that's from Nick Faldo in 2010 at the PGA. What do you think that's referring to? Uh, it wouldn't have to do with a uh, sandy area in a the gallery, in the grandstands. <laughs> Not in the gallery. I mean, it was up on the side of a hill. Now, DJ was, shouldn't have hit was, it there. I, I'm surprised he was in inbounds. I mean, yeah. Dustin Johnson leads it by one, driving it wildly here at the 72nd hole. There's his ball on a flat spot. Deep right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, he's in this sandy area, whistling straights. 2010. He's been on tour three years at this point. And and by the way, he after described his first it, suspension. After no. Nine wasn't two thousand. Oh, that's right. You're right. Right after his first suspension, mm -hmm. so it's a about a little. It's about a year and a, four months after his first suspension. So he's already kind of not happy with the PGA tour, and they're not happy with him. So we've nope. already established that pattern. He's not Mr. Grill Room. He's not. Nope. And he even said he walked up there, and there were Gatorade bottles and beer cans everywhere. That's a quote from him. I did find that tape. Yeah. Oh, really? Uh, well, yeah. yeah. The, the, the grat gallery was in the bunker, so to speak. And there was the waste literally area. Really a was. hole. There was just a hole. There was a, the, the fans were all around him. Footprints, everything, whatever. And, and now, unfortunately, the rules were the rules on that week. So he, he was wrong, but well, somebody... Well, I have a question. Mm -hmm. I have a question. You're a smart guy, and you're the head of research around here, and a good player. Uh... Why, if you were the tournament director of the PGA of America's championship in 2010, and you had this situation with these many, 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 many sandy areas that are, I believe the members play as waste areas, yes. um, not bunkers. Bunkers, you say bunker, now it's a hazard. Oh, it was a that's hazard a, different, a whole different set ahead. of rules, right? Yep. yep. So that's the situation. You put out the memo. You make all the players aware. They said that they taped it to their lockers, and I believe that. You know, yep. if it's got sand in it, it's a bunker. Treat it as such. Okay, fine. I'm with you so far. Here's where I have a problem and my question to you, if you're the tournament director. Don't you have enough sense to say to the, you know, to the, the, the volunteers, I guess, that are crowd control. I know exactly where you're coming you from. you got to keep people out of the bunkers. Uh, well, here's... here's they're the, all being played as bunkers. 
hazards. You can't let people go in there because it's just as likely that DJ's ball is in a hole, in a footprint, yeah. in a heel mark. My yeah. bigger point to this is the people who the volunteers or the PGA staff when they're moving those people around, the first thing I say, DJ, by the way, it looks like your ball is in a sandy area. I, 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 you probably shouldn't ground your club. I mean, why is nobody explaining this to DJ? Because he's walking up there. He's just trying to find the ball in his shot and seeing if he's even going to, how, how many uh, minutes yeah. is it going to take for them to clear the gallery? I think there's room to blame the caddy. Um, there's certainly room to blame DJ. He should have read the memo. He's a professional. I'm not well, making excuses here for the guy. Neither are you. But right. this was another mysteriously, you know, would Tiger have gotten that ruling? No. Well, we, we, we'll, we'll no. go. We have a show of Tiger rulings, but that's, that's fine. T Tiger can sign the wrong scorecard and not he get did. disqualified. He did. Oh, that's right. He did. <laughs> no, so he we, gets the we, ruling at Whistling Straits and loses yeah. the tournament. Loses out, does not make the playoff. Does not make the playoff. Um, interesting, uh, from my perspective, even... Uh, your eventual winner, Martin Keimer, uh, Keimer, basically said, you know, DJ probably should have been in the playoff. It, it, I, it was always in, it's been in the back of my mind. Would I have still won if he were in the playoff? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then the next, so, so the, that was in 2010. Okay, so this, this distrust, this ill feelings towards the golf aristocracy, maybe represented by the PGA Tour, but now the PGA of America has de dealt him a bad hand in the PGA at Whistling Straits. Now the USGA has ganged on. <laughs> He's got these yeah. three suspension. Now we're up into 2016. He wins the fabulous US Open over that baloney from the USGA. 2017 goes to the Masters, falls down the stairs on Wednesday night, can't play. Now we're through the Masters in 17. He wins the Masters in 21. In 20. And you know what? Then you fast forward, and I think the last sort of dig, the last little knife is that I'm going to bring up here is in March of this year, Rory comes out and wants all suspensions and all fines made public. Hmm. Who's he addressing there? Yeah, it's a great... Clearly, he was aimed at somebody, and it could have been yeah. several somebodies. Phil Mickelson comes well, to mind. It was, I believe it was several somebodies who were all going to go to the live tour. Johnson, DeChambeau, all those guys. Phil. Um, not a Tiger. Phil. No. Well, Phil. Tiger's untouchable. Tiger's untouchable. But it was at Phil, it was at DJ, it was DeChambeau and Kepka. Because yeah. they've all taken some time yeah. off for injuries. Well, and now remember you're, the, now you're, see, now you're planting breadcrumbs for future episodes so for future breadcrumb yeah. episodes i this like to call why did, why did dj mm. go to live but there's a there's a coming episode for why did bryson why did yeah. why did phil uh why did uh, brooks all of them are, sergio are we we've come all the way to uh our original premise which is da, 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 who does live want okay uh for sure who can they get and then yeah who would actually agree to go? Who do they want? They want top stars, but not all the top stars are going to go. That's not money. Yeah. You need to find a top star, top star that has a motivation big enough that's not money to right. go. Okay, and so you got disgruntled employees. I'm going after the head of sales for my competitor because I know that he or she is a great salesperson, sales leader, and they are ticked off at yeah. the company that they work for. Yeah, I can get them. And they're going to bring over yeah. a lot to my company. So who can live get? Well, DJ, because <laughs> he's disgruntled. He's very disgruntled. And he, we still got to offer him enough money where that de-risks the situation. But we don't need to offer him a billion dollars. He'll come. He's He'll happily change companies. Right, Dark Star? Is that what we're saying? I, I think it was. A, yeah, he was a no-brainer. Uh, we'll talk about some other guys, certainly. Um in fact, I just saw a recent headline where DeChambeau talked about he, you know, his relationship with Tiger has cooled because of this situation. Obviously, we're going to talk about DeChambeau coming up also. We are. We're going to talk. But let's, we'll go back over the list here. And I find this list to be fascinating. And we're going to do even more thinking about it. This is the list that we built of live in our 
we picked January of 2022, what's the list of top stars that, that we want to get? Put them all there. Tigers, number one. Spieth, number two. Rory, number three. Bryson, number four. DJ, fifth. Yeah, okay. Then John Rahm, JT, Kepka goes on down the, the, the line. Fascinating list. It gives you the pecking order of what drives TV ratings and money for the PGA Tour and who Liv really, really wanted to go after. And you disgruntled is only one component because Bryson DeChambeau doesn't fit that mold. So let's Correct. tease that episode. So maybe we'll go right to Bryson for the next episode of why they went. Uh, he's not disgruntled. He's having no, a great run. Not. But there's something. There's something that's not money. Why would Bryson leave and risk everything? A great career. A great career already percolating. Top star on the PGA Tour. Making all kinds of money. He's going to go to live. He went to live. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. That's a good one, Dark Star. I like it. That's excellent. I think Dr. Dark Star is out. That's all for this video. For Dr. Dark Star and me, thanks for watching. This is a show about finding logical conclusions, and we appreciate you coming along with us. We'll be adding episodes as fast as we can. There's certainly no shortage of things going on in this world. <laughs>